Well, it's nice to be inside on a day like this. Welcome back to Bromberg News. I'm Tatiana Thompson. If you're going through the same cold snap as we're here, have you noticed chickadees fly around like mad, puffed up twice their size? Well, believe it or not, it's not the puffiness that keeps them warm in cold weather. In order to survive, chickadees need a steady diet of fatty foods like sunflower seeds and peanuts, and they need to have access to food at all times. That's why they take food, and they go and hide it elsewhere. Every summer I'm amazed that my house doesn't sprout with sunflowers everywhere. The interesting thing that I found when doing a little bit of research, that every fall or every time it gets really cold, chickadees' brains actually get bigger, growing extra brain cells to help them remember where they hide their food. Anyway, this is to remind you to keep your bird feeders full in cold weather and don't be afraid to put up an extra bird feeder I have uh, nine bird feeders going on right now, some in the front, in the back, attached to the house. I even have a finch feeder hidden in a cedar hedge. Very popular. I have just found out that last year Kenya banned the use, import and manufacturing of plastic bags. Montreal has also just banned plastic bags from grocery stores. I mean, we all know that plastic is horrible for the environment, but still there are so many people that continue to use plastic bags. I mean, why do you need to bag your loose vegetables and fruits? You still need to wash them before you eat. I've been doing this for years and every time I feel so much better when I don't have to use another plastic bag. David, a colleague of mine, noticed red and white-breasted nuthatches feeding at one of our feeders by the office. She's curious to find out if these birds compete with each other. You know, that's a really interesting question. I looked at the distribution maps of both of these two nuthatches, and they're pretty much uh, found all across Canada, with the exception of the white-breasted species not being found in Newfoundland and the west coast of British Columbia, including Vancouver Island. And from my perspective, as someone who's fed birds in Montreal for years, and now on Vancouver Island, we did see a fair number of white-breasted nuthatches at our feeders in the east, and now see loads of red-breasted nuthatches at our feeders in the west, but no white-breasted birds. Both of these birds are designed to feed in the same manner, that is by moving down a tree trunk, or branch and likely eating a lot of the same insect type foods. That's their niche in life, but they can't occupy exactly the same niche in nature, otherwise one of them would outcompete the other to the point of extinction. So they find ways to coexist. For example, red-breasted nuthatches prefer forests with lots of fir and spruce, whereas white-breasted nuthatches like deciduous forests. The red breast seeks to, its food on the main trunk and larger branches near the tops of the taller trees and the white breast forages near the ground or on low trees. Their personalities also differ. White-breasted nuthatches are not shy to join mixed feeding flocks with chickadees and titmice, whereas red-breasted nuthatches tend to be more aggressive toward a host of other bird species, including chasing away white-breasted nuthatches from their nesting trees. The bottom line to all of this is that when it comes to feeders, the two nuthatch species just avoid each other's presence and thus they take turns visiting a given feeder. You know how I always go on about planting native trees and flowers? Well, a town around Daunting Lake is one of the many in China that will be cutting down thousands of black poplars and other foreign invasive trees that have been totally destructive to the environment. Local birds have not only not taken to these British trees, but they also cannot use the lake. Between the pulp and paper industry and the non-native trees that have driven away all the wildlife, the lake and the surrounding area have become totally uninhabitable. China's Environment Agency will actually be cutting down over 3 million invasive trees in an attempt to restore natural habitats. This is great! The only thing we have to get them to do is to stop frying sparrows as snacks. 
Have you ever heard of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act? It's just celebrated its centennial. It was created because of the crazy feather trade that took place at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. Remember how many snowy and great egrets had to be killed to decorate fancy hats of women of upper class? It's also the same acts that the federal government had successfully used to sue and find developers that were killing birds with their projects. Well, on the 22nd of December, the U.S. Department of Interior issued a rather sad memorandum. Basically, what it means is that construction, mining, wind farm and oil companies will no longer be responsible and will not be fined for incidental takings of birds. I find it so sad to see so many years of environmental protection get tossed out the window. Well, another reminder to vote on the photo entries on this month's photo contest. The theme is sparrows and keep your feeders filled. Goodbye, everyone.